Hey guys, welcome to uh, to Parents Night. This is uh, this is night three, and we're in a series that we're calling Make Sense. Now, if you've missed some of our previous videos, you can check them out on YouTube, and soon we're actually going to be uh, you're going to be able to check those out on our podcast, which is called Parents Night. So keep your eyes open for that. It's going to be uh, be coming soon. Uh, now, last week we talked about a handful of essential basics that help with the faith development of our kids. And even though they are basics, that doesn't mean that they aren't vital. Absolutely. Uh, there's this one story I remember from, uh, I don't remember who told it, but years back I was told uh, there was this, uh, this one hockey team and they had like a lot of quality players on the team, but they, they weren't winning. They kept on having uh, struggles. They got themselves a new coach and uh, the new coach he made all the players start running absolutely like basic bottom line drills, just like stuff that newbies would have to run. And he made them run these drills over and over and over again. And some of like the star players, they, they couldn't figure out why they had to run these simple basic, uh, basic plays and basic practices. Uh, but as time went on, they began to improve and things began to turn around for this team. And uh, it was attributed back to the fact that they went back to the basics. They, they didn't think that they were beyond them, but they, they returned to the things. Because, I mean, basics are often like a foundation on a house. You know, if you take away the foundation, the house is going to fall apart. Small traces done consistently yield big results or big change over time. Absolutely. Now, that was, uh, that was last week. This week, we're looking at the subject of speaking our kids' language. And we'll explain what that means in just a moment. But first, I want to point out that as parents, one of our greatest goals is raising healthy kids, emotionally healthy, physically, relationally, spiritually. We want to raise healthy kids. Now, as parents, one thing we all know is that our kids are unique. No two kids are exactly the same. With that, it's important to realize that because our kids are unique, that there is no one-size-fits-all method to raising healthy kids. Absolutely. You know, and this truth has been driven home a lot for me in, in recent weeks. Uh, last week, I, uh, I redid a version of the Myers-Briggs personality test with the uh, full gospel leadership team. And it was super insightful, both for myself and how I process and respond to life. But I found it more so uh, impressive in the, the way that uh, it taught me how the other leaders on the team process things. Now, for those who, uh, who don't know what this test is, uh, it's been around for, for quite a long time, and it, it, breaks down, uh, it breaks us down into categories of introverted over extroverted, intuitive versus sensing, thinking or feeling, judging or perceiving. Uh, and it takes these, the four main qualities and then it lines them up together. And it's amazing uh, when you look at it, how you understand the aspects of yourself, and it gives a lot of insight into, into how you process life. You know, our leadership team uh, was, was kind of cool to see because there was a lot of diversity in, in this team. And it was neat to see how uh, it gave me insight into how I can relate to and communicate better with, uh, with the team around me. And uh, for me, a big part was, was really coming to the understanding of how other people don't see and don't respond to life the same way that I do. And how at times... Uh, that can lead to miscommunication or even damaged relationships if we're not aware of what's going on. Now, it got me thinking deeper on how, as parents, uh, this affects how we communicate and respond with our kids. I think at times we see our kids as many versions of ourselves, mm -hmm. and so we treat them as such. But as much as our kids have some of our traits, that doesn't mean that they see and process life the exact same way as we do. Yeah, and this idea has been uh, been driven home for me even further uh, as I've recently been uh, been listening to Gary Chapman's book, the, the Five Love Languages of Children, which I'll be honest, has been super insightful and, uh, and really challenging. The book breaks down uh, people and gives us, uh, it teaches us how we, we give and receive love. And there, there's five main categories. There's words of affirmation, there's acts of service, there's touch, <laughs> there's quality time, uh, there's receiving gifts. And as I've been going through this book, it's really got me asking the question uh, that we've kind of been exploring through this series, uh, which is, does the way we're living really make sense? And especially in this area of how I relate to and communicate with my kids. The funny thing is most of the stuff I've been learning 
in this book hasn't actually been, been brand new for me. And for some of you parents out there, I'm sure that it's not going to be new to you either. But with that said, I have definitely been challenged as I reread some of these, uh, these topics. For me, a great thing uh, that I've been blessed with is uh, as I look at my wife, uh, I see that she gets a lot of these insights uh, pretty naturally. She's talked to me in the... She's talked to me in the past before about ways that I need to adjust my methods in order to connect better with some of my kids because uh, they understand and they respond to things very differently. And the cool thing is I've been able to see things change and get better as I work through these things. Now, I need to be clear. I think we all need to be clear. <laughs> uh, I'm not perfect. Us as a family, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are continuing to grow and move towards better, which is what we want to invite you and your family into. This is a journey. And it's a wonderful thing. And it takes time, though. To add to all that complexity we've talked about so far, I have also been reminded and drawn back to that sacred pathway study that we did a while back with the gospel. Yeah, it was a really good study. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this, it's based on a, a book written by Gary Thomas. Not Chapman. This one's Thomas. Um, and it explores the, the different ways that we as people connect with and feel closeness with God. It's an amazing book. Uh, and for me, it was very affirming and eye-opening to see and understand how people connect to God using very different and diverse methods and expressions. Mm -hmm. Now, we bring all of this, uh, this complexity of personality, love languages, and the different ways we connect with God because we want, uh, we want to get a very real sense of the fact that there's a lot going on below the surface in the lives of our kids. And if we want to raise emotionally, spiritually, and relationally healthy kids, it is going to take some intentional effort. If we want to raise healthy kids, we need to learn to speak their language. We need to learn to connect and communicate with them in ways that they can understand and process well. Absolutely. I'm reminded of, uh, of you know, those old movies where there's like somebody that goes on vacation to a country that, uh, that they're not uh, familiar with the cultures and the language and they, they try to communicate with the local and uh, the vacationer tries to speak louder and enunciate more thinking that this will somehow help the local to understand but the problem is they're both speaking different languages so neither of them really understands you know we can't just assume that speaking louder is going to communicate properly with our kids we need to learn their language if we hope to communicate in a meaningful and healthy manner. Now, this is not, uh, not necessarily an easy feat to accomplish. And we're pointing this, this out for all of us for a few reasons. First of all, so that we get a very deep sense of our need for God in this. Because I'll be honest, I'm convinced that without God's help, we can't do this right. We, we won't get it right. Secondly, I want us to remember that we are all human. We're all faulty and we won't get this right every time. But I want to encourage us with a word from an old Hebrew proverb that says, for though a righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up again. We will make mistakes, but we don't need to let them define us. If we make a mistake, such as lash out in anger, or if we notice we drop the ball on something, let's apologize to them and model out how we should be living, even if it comes at the cost of our pride. Mm -hmm. We can teach them mistakes are made by everyone, parents too. And we bring this up thirdly because this takes intentionality. We live in a busy time, and being busy is, is often seen as a virtue in some circles. Now, especially when it comes to us as parents, we feel the weight of busyness. Mm -hmm. There's jobs that need to be worked so we can pay the bills that just keep coming. There are things around the house that need fixing and things around the house that need cleaning. There's family needs, school needs, there's expectations on us, there's emails and messages that we have to reply to. Not to mention that we have the sense that we ourselves somehow need to be healthy, uh, as well as we have that TV show that we, re we really need to watch mm -hmm. that. Um, and, and there's so much more in life. Now, a lot of these things, they, they feel like they need our immediate attention. Unfortunately, in all of our busyness, it's often our kids who pay the biggest price. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't get the attention they need or feel loved enough or led spiritually <clears throat> properly. And when kids and teens don't get these needs met, they end up looking elsewhere for someone or something to meet these needs. Now, I was on my, uh, my way back to the office this week when I was challenged by, uh, by an idea. 
You know, much of what seems urgent in the moment uh, doesn't really matter in the long run. You know, in, in 10 years, will we really look back and be happy with the things that we invested our time in over the things that we ended up neglecting? Because here's the truth, we can't do everything. And our lives, they're, they're the sum of our choices. What we choose to do is what our life will turn into. Our lives and our relationships, they're built out of the small choices that we make every day. The hugs we give or we don't give, the kind words that we speak or neglect, the attention or lack thereof that we show to our kids versus the attention we give to our cell phones and, and so on. Now, with all this said, I want to go back to the question that we started all of this with. Uh, and I want us to take a good look at ourselves and ask this question. Does the way I'm living really make sense? And if the answer for you is no, I want you to ask yourself, what is one thing that I can go ahead and change today? Now, with that said, I think we're, we're going to close things off, but I want you to really, really dig into that thought. Um, if you're watching this video on YouTube or you're, uh, you're listening to it on our podcast, I want to encourage you to take this, uh, this question, uh, really, really dig through it, and then write to us with your thoughts. Uh, let us know how we can pray for you and uh, how we can, we can help you in this. And we want to invite you out to our next Parents' Night on mm -hmm. December the 3rd at 8 p.m. via Zoom. We make it 8, so usually the, the kids can be in bed and parents can have that time to just hang out. Um, this is meant to be more than content. We want to engage in conversation and talk together, live together. Absolutely. So, yeah, join us for the next Parents' Night, and we'll see you there.